truth said, you will surely come out of it. I said, you will surely come out of it. Because many have been brought out of their big situation. And your case is not going to be an exception. Now there are people that can give me the facts that I've been praying. What have you been praying? Prayer is it's when you cease not to pray. Prayer is not what you prayed before. What you prayed before is a fact. But the truth is what you are doing in the place of prayer now. Because every prayer has gestation period or it has a life cycle. And that's what many of us don't know. We know that prayer is the master key. Yeah, that's a fact. But the truth is that prayers are not all the same. There are prayers that you pray ahead of time before you could see the result. There are prayers that have life cycle. So you can't just pray them at any moment you like, particularly when there's trouble. No. You don't get those answers. Psalm 32 verse 6 said, We should pray unto him when he may be found. So that in the days of great flood of waters, they will not come near us. No wonder the Bible says, When the enemy comes like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise a standard. Why? You have prayed before. You can't just engage that prayer at the moment. It may not always work for you. Now, truth, they are predicated on premises. The Bible says by the mouth of two or three witnesses. So just one scripture does not necessarily establish or gives what you are doing or your engagement a sufficient premise for a result to be delivered. It's important we have this because your future is greater than all the best experiences you've ever had in life. Amen. And your future has more than what you are battling with. The shame and the pain. Why you are not dead, you are still alive is because God has seen that your future is better than what you are going through. And why God can still keep you alive and contain and overturn the forces of death is because you have a great future. I know one of the great men of God in this nation that I respect so much. In his early days, he was passing through a lot. He took poison to die. Yes, he passed out, went unconscious, and he was happy that he had solved his life problem. And then when he came back to life, when he was gaining consciousness, he had people talking around. He thought it was in heaven. <laughs> he didn't know that neighbors. Now he didn't go anywhere, he was still around the world. But he's a great man of God today. He has great deliverance ministry. Sometimes we get so selfish in our ignorance and we want to end it. Come on. Your testimony, if, it's, if you don't wait for your testimony, you have robbed your generation. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. No matter how bad it is. The more terrible the situation, the bigger the weight of the testimony. Now it's only the truth that can tell you that the weight of what you are passing through will secure for you an enviable testimony that will secure the destiny of other people in the future. And knowing this fact, knowing this truth, we defend the gospel. Any attempt to accelerate to analyze and draw your conclusion to quit, you are, you, are, you are dragging the gospel to mud. You are bringing reproach to the gospel. You are failing the cloud of witnesses. But if you stay true and you will not let your emotions set you up against the truth, a day will definitely become that you will become a written atheist. That your story will become a pillar in the kingdom of God. That people will find comfort. You become a daughter of consolation. When people remember your case, a lot are consoled. It's not every service that pastor is able to express 
God's word adequately in a way that is able to help some of us. But testimonies are powerful tools in defending the gospel. I'm here to challenge you that no matter how bad your situations are, your word of those that God has marked, don't allow the enemy to speak to you against God's intention. Because what you are passing through will soon become a tool in the hand of God that will save your generation. Not just your life alone. Because if you give up, you have given a tool to the devil that he will use it to demoralize a lot of other people. We are here to defend the gospel. Apostle Paul passed through what no pastor will wish to pass through. If I were Apostle Paul, I'm not sure I would have survived because I would have given up the title of an apostle so that I won't suffer those things that he suffered. Great. He had more revelation than any other apostle. He had so much great encounters that no any apostle benefited. He had deeper revelation of grace than any other. He had understanding of the supernatural than any other person. But he passed through most worst situation, most difficult situation. Is it because he had no understanding of the nine spiritual gifts that he talked about? He operated in the supernatural but had infirmities because he said, I am set for the defense of the gospel. Not even a prophet could make him withdraw from his calling like prophet Agabus brought a ghetto and said concerning the honor of this ghetto will soon be bound. And the facts made them to me. It's only facts that makes you cry. The truth will embolden you. When you know the truth, it will set you free. The Bible says they that know their God shall be what? Strong before exploit. But today we go for exploit and at the end of the day we are not able to preserve or retain our testimonies. Some of us, our testimonies don't last at all. Now look at the life of David. Two testimonies preserved him and took him to the palace. Two testimonies. By the efficacy of two testimonies in his life, he retained, he was able to access the balance. Right. Some of us, you have received more than 20 in your lifetime. You are still struggling because you can't separate facts and the truth. You can't defend the gospel with that lifestyle. He took his two testimonies and went to defend the God of Israel. A teenager with two testimonies went to defend the army of God that we are losing that what that they were losing. Just imagine a, 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 a teenager who would tell adults, trained military officers, generals, like Saul, they were all seated. He said to them, Let not your heart fail you. That Goliath has been a champion right from his youth. Now that he's more advanced, where are you going to? He said, you don't know my testimony. Your testimony has to be immortalized. Your testimony has to be preserved. The present church does not know how to preserve testimonies. It's only when we're in trouble that we just say it without understanding. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. No! If God has ever been charitable, kind to you, and proved himself as Jehovah for once, 
and repeated it the second time, you deserve to count him and judge him faithfully, no matter what you are passing through. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.